I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psychax Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is making women feel right is a business. So this is a companion piece to an episode I did a while back called Making Men Angry is a Business. The female counterpart has been a long time coming, and here it is. Just to recap, making men angry is the dark side of the manosphere. These content creators present examples of egregious female behavior in order to encourage male rage and disgust at the apparent entitlement, delusion, selfishness, and cruelty of these particular individuals. And they do this, for better or worse, because it works. This content drives clicks and views and engagement because whether you agree with it or not, it's good television. That is, it's emotionally compelling and addictive. It also appeals to a particularly modern male fantasy, namely, the desire to see modern women get their comeuppance. The fact of the matter is that women get away with all kinds of shit in today's day and age, behavior that society would never tolerate in a man. Few men stand up to women, because doing so is a kind of social suicide in today's political climate, though that doesn't eliminate the desire to see it happen. Many men, through the anonymity of the internet, can live this fantasy vicariously through the content creators who are brave or foolhardy enough to do so. So that's the content trap that tends to ensnare men. However, the female version is even more insidious. It's more insidious because as big as the male problem is, the female problem is not only bigger, it's more invisible. This trap is big business, even bigger than the business of making men angry for the simple reason that women tend to spend more money than men. Men might make more money, but women spend more money. Over 85% of consumer purchases in the United States are made by women, which is why such a huge proportion of advertisers tend to cater to women's values and sensibilities. Marketers have learned that tapping into female fantasy can be insanely profitable. And the way this is done, at least among many content creators online, is by making women feel right. The creators who can make women feel right are the gendered equivalents of the creators who make men feel angry. And while I'm not going to name any names, there are many creators online who do this very, very well. Though they may not be exhibiting a high degree of integrity, they are clearly savvy businessmen. And some of these creators, especially the men who do this, are making a metric shit ton of money off these women by telling them exactly the fuck they want to hear. And the ones who do this the best are actually very attractive. Like, they tend to be good-looking men. They work out, they dress nice, they talk sweet. And this, of course, is an important component of the production. After all, the part that women always leave out is that they want all the things they want from the men they are attracted to. Without that attraction, they are much less interested. And these men are extremely good at reflecting back to women what they already feel and believe which is generally what women want to hear when they go to their friends or their therapists or their boyfriends for advice. That is, they want to hear that they're right and that the problem lies elsewhere. Between the attractiveness and the reflection, these men are functionally romance novel protagonists. They look how women want them to look and they say what women want them to say. If you appreciate the insights on this channel, I would highly encourage you to get your hands on a copy of my book, The Value of Others. Over the course of 432 pages, I delve deep into my economic model of relationships and explain the behavior of both men and women in the game of mating and dating. I also provide a lot of actionable advice on how to get and keep more of what you want in the sexual marketplace. Once you read The Value of Others, you'll never look at relationships the same way again. Now available in ebook, audiobook, and paperback formats. The links are in the description. So, how do you spot these creators? 
These men will say something like, You know why you're single, right? You're single because, as a beautiful, intelligent, high achieving woman, you're just too intimidating. Any man who isn't interested in you is just too insecure in his selfhood or fragile in his masculinity to be the partner you deserve. Or, the reason why your relationship failed, it's because you love too much. You lost yourself in your loving. And so it's important to maintain appropriate boundaries moving forward. And this vulnerability, unfortunately, was exploited by a selfish and opportunistic man. But don't worry. One day, you'll find someone who can meet you at the depth of your feeling. A man who isn't afraid of his emotions. A man who isn't afraid to communicate. A man who isn't afraid of real intimacy and commitment. A real man. Etc., etc., etc. These men tell women exactly what they want to hear, and these women eat it up. Even though they're largely just reflecting the women's fantasies, they see this information coming from an apparently independent source, which validates the correctness of their subjective experience. No need to look any deeper at myself. It turns out I was right all along. <sighs> I feel so much better. And that's ultimately what these women are paying for, that relief, that feeling of feeling so much better. Now, people don't have as much of a problem with this trap as the trap laid out for men described earlier because this trap uses ostensibly positive emotions. It's completely saturated with them, in fact. Love, hope, confidence, self-respect, empowerment. In order to give the impression of emotional resonance without really saying anything at all. And of course, that all might be well and good, except for the fact that a lot of this is complete and utter bullshit. Most of it just isn't true. These men are tapping into a latent fantasy. Granted, a fantasy that seems less unpleasant and destructive than the male fantasy previously discussed, but a fantasy nonetheless. And a fantasy isn't real. Like, by definition, a fantasy is not aligned with reality. And this is a problem, because irrespective of how beautiful a fantasy is, the more a given model of reality is built upon fantasy, the more precarious that model becomes. Even one's sense of self can become unstable as a result. This is because when things are built upon foundations that lack structural integrity— they tend to fall apart at the slightest challenge. And I think we can definitely see that in today's day and age. Like, are modern women more resilient today in the face of critical but potentially honest feedback or less? You might think that as they become more empowered and successful, they would also become more robust and resilient. However, this development is frustrated, at least in part, by objective sources that validate women's fantasies by reflecting back to them what they've already chosen to believe. And that's why women flocked, they flock to these sources that cater to this fantasy. Like, the truth is not well-loved. And being honest is generally not the thing to be. Like, telling the truth just makes you honest. It doesn't make you money. It doesn't get you laid. And it doesn't make you popular. If you want to get rich or get laid or get popular— then you need to learn to play the games of money, seduction, and charisma, respectively. The truth isn't sexy, and it often doesn't feel good. It may be what people need, but it's rarely what people want. And giving people what they don't want isn't going to make you a lot of friends. Most medicine is bitter, so it's generally necessary to administer it with a spoonful of sugar. However, if all you take is sugar— then don't be surprised when you end up sick to your stomach. Something to consider. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? Let me know in the comments below. And please send this episode to someone who you think might benefit from its message, because it's word-of-mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. And anyone looking to join my free weekly newsletter or book a paid consultation can do so on my website. Links in the description. As always, I appreciate your support. And thank you for listening.